as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Welcome to the BT Messages of Hope. Today's message of hope is one of our last two, Uh, but no worries. We're starting up a new series of talks that I will uh, talk a bit about at the end of today and tomorrow's message. Um, Before we dive in, please take a moment and pray with me. Lord, thank you for the gift of another day. Help us continue to uh, cultivate thankful hearts. Help us uh, continue to love and learn to love you more and love our neighbors more uh, in the midst of all that's going on. We we continue to pray for those who are hurting uh, physically and for those who are serving on the front lines and doctors and nurses and um, everyone else who's serving in the food service industry and um, garbage collection and um, uh, yeah, everyone who's helping right now. And um, we pray for all those who are hurting emotionally and spiritually and um that you would give us hope and that you would be a light to us in the day, today and the days ahead. Help us continue to trust you for our daily bread. Uh, be with us now as we, we look to your scriptures again and learn a bit more about you. And um, I pray that you'd give um, all those who are here today a bit more hope uh, for the day ahead. In your name we pray. Amen. For today's message and tomorrow, I just want to share with you a few passages from the scriptures that I keep coming back to again and again. Uh, These are parts of the Bible, different books of the Bible, different scenes and stories that I've been coming back to over and over and over again because they've given me a lot of hope and and they've been sustaining to me in in these times. I end up in a Zoom prayer meeting uh, six or seven times each week, and I like to read these passages to whoever will listen. I hope that these passages will give you a bit of hope and encouragement today. Uh, So anyway, today I'm sharing one, and tomorrow I'll share a few more. Today's reading is Genesis 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome on the sky to separate the day from the night. And let there be signs, and for seasons, and for days, and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome in the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and Fill the waters in the seas, 
and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our own image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit you shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth and every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. I come back to this passage to remind myself again and again that it is good, 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 good. Over and over and over again, God affirms that what is made is good. Now, yes, it all goes really bad, uh, but one mistake I think I make and many Christians often make is that they begin the story of creation in Genesis 3 where everything goes bad. And everything does go bad. Mankind rejects God's gifts. Men and women hurt each other. There becomes a, a brokenness throughout all creation. Sin, evil, it spreads like a virus disrupting the order and goodness of this good earth. So much so that the followers of Jesus will We'll look at this world and say, we all like sheep have gone astray. And uh, there is no one now who really does the good. And even creation itself is longing and groaning, waiting to be restored. So we often start with how bad things are. But this story of God and this world, the story of God and his world starts with how good things are. Good is the first word. Light is the first word. Creation, blessing, image bearers are the first words. And as a follower of Jesus, and as someone who just told you all about the resurrection and hope of new creation, I keep coming back to these words to remind myself that God is good and makes good things. Come back to these words to remind yourself in dark times. Yes, chaos and sin and evil has gotten back into this world, but I believe that creation will be restored and new creation will break forth one day and that Christ has come to fight the evil and decay. And that all continues to give me hope. Hope that the good that started it all will be fully good one day again. And this present evil will be overcome. God made it all for good, and he will restore it for good again, and that gives me hope. I hope it gives you a bit of hope, too. So uh, we're going to shift gears and talk a bit about what's coming up. Uh, I want to talk to you about really one more thing today. We're coming to the end of the messages of hope, but do not lose hope, because on Monday we're starting a new series called Looking for Light. Do you feel like things are a bit darker right now? Uh, do you know friends and family that, uh, that worry you because you see that they are in a dark place right now or heading towards a darker place? You aren't alone. A lot of us are feeling the darkness uh, creep in a bit. Uh, we have fears. We have worries. Uh, there's a dark uncertainty of what comes next. 
And I believe we need light in this time and in this darkness. And I believe that Jesus is the light that shines into our darkness. I believe that people right now need the light of Jesus more than ever. This isn't a time for caring all about how to get people to see how cool our church is. Uh, There's actually never a time for that. Uh, I don't think it's a time for big production or big shows or big gimmicks. I I think this is the real time to share who Jesus is with people. Uh, That's one thing changing me as this goes on. Uh, I just think more and more that people need Jesus. Uh, I see how helpful he's been for me in everyday life. And and I want to help people get to know him, especially when they're going through stuff. Uh, This virus is wrecking people. It's going to wreck a lot of us spiritually and emotionally and physically. And we're going to need something more than science and technology and politicians and the economy. And I'm, I'm thankful for a lot of those things and the way people help and serve in those areas. But I know we need Jesus Uh, because he's bigger and he's light to so many people in darkness. Uh, I want to see as many people as possible have the chance to hear about Jesus, uh, especially in this time. I used to lead a youth group that was absolute chaos. Uh, We had 50 or 60 or 70 kids each week in a 17 by 30 room and we ate a big meal each week. Uh, So it was a mess. Uh, Usually more than half our kids weren't from churches and wouldn't say that they were believers in Jesus. And we used to tell them stories of Jesus. We'd say each week, hey, if this place is good for you, if these stories are good for you, would you invite others along? We think Jesus is good for you and that's why we try to love you. But whatever you believe, if there's something good here, bring others along. There was a young woman, a teenager, didn't believe in Jesus, but she had started coming. She was a bit rough around the edges. Uh, She'd sit in the back and she'd make fun of us. Uh, But she took that request, that that call to invite others to heart. She had a few friends who were an absolute mess and they were not church people at all. And she saw them one day, uh, she saw her friends and she saw that they were in a mess. And she said, hey, I know of this place. It's kind of good for me. And they said, bring people who are hurting. So you should come. And then uh, her friends came. Uh, And her one of her friends heard a bunch of stories about Jesus. And then one of her friends became someone who believed in Jesus. And then years later, that person who invited others but never really believed in Jesus uh, during her time at our group, she found a few videos on YouTube that talked about Jesus and she decided to believe in Jesus too. Those are two people who had some darkness and rough times in their life, but people invited them. People invited them in person to a place where they could hear about Jesus And uh, one of them found online about Jesus. And when they heard about Jesus, it brought them light and hope and life. When you invite people to hear about who Jesus is, either in person or online, sometimes they say yes, and they get to hear about him. And then Jesus ends up giving some of those people a lot of life and hope. I think it's time to tell people more than ever, about what Jesus has said and done. If Jesus is helpful for us, then we should share him with others. If Jesus is really good for you, then tell others about him. Jesus brings light and healing and hope to us. And we want others to find that too. This new series will be simply telling the stories of Jesus's life, primarily from the Gospel of John. We're going to go through the gospel, the stories of Jesus and John, and just share them and tell whoever will listen the stories and teachings of Jesus. This will be a Monday through Friday thing, and it's for anyone and everyone who needs Jesus. I believe it'll continue to be a message of hope for each of us, but our big hope is that these messages would help people who don't know much about Jesus or who have left church for reasons other than Jesus. Have you ever left church for reasons other than Jesus? Yes, I'm, I see some of you nodding. <laughs> I see that hand, amen. Um, I think Jesus is for all types of people. And it's not fair that only church people talk and know about Jesus. Uh, in John, Jesus is with fishermen, prostitutes, tax collectors, all different branches of religious folks, soldiers, siblings, the deeply wounded, uh, both physically and emotionally. And Jesus was good news for all of them. 
except some of the religious folks and political folks. And he would have been good news for them if they would listen to him. I'll give you a challenge or I'll ask you to do something now. Invite people to listen along with you. If this is meaningful to you, then bring others with you. Think about some people that this might be good for and share it. Invite them to listen and discuss. Uh, my personal hope is to get a text thread going or a messenger thread going with a few folks who haven't been connected to the church in a long time or ever um, that I'm friends with. So I'm, I'm telling them, I'm saying, here, here's a daily video that's about 10 minutes that tells one story of Jesus and then talks about it for a few minutes. Uh, would you watch it and tell me what you think? You could do something like that too. You could start a Facebook group or a Zoom group or, uh, you know, nothing crazy, but some simple way, or you could call somebody on the phone or you could say, hey, what do you think of Jesus in this story? Is this crazy? Is this unbelievable? What's interesting to you? What's sticking out to you? And so come up with something, <laughs> invite others, figure out a way to connect with them and show them and talk to them about Jesus. And we can help. We post these on Facebook, but we can set it up for you to for these to be emailed to them and to you or texted to them daily. If you have ideas for ways to help others listen and watch and talk about it, tell us. You can shoot us uh, messages and you can shoot a message to us uh, below in the YouTube channel or, you know, tell us. Tell us how there's ways we can help. Um, all right. So that's what we're doing. Uh, thanks for listening. Um, get ready for Monday. Be sharing, be telling other people about what we're doing. Um, but yeah, that's all for today. God bless you. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you like no one else. Uh, and we'll see you next time for our, our last official messages of hope.